So now I'm joined by another Arsenal legend, not just an Arsenal legend, a, a women's football legend, I think, not just in England, either in many other countries, but Anita Asante. Anita, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, Tim. Um, Anita, obviously we're here tonight because of the new stadium wrap on Emirates Stadium and, you know, you're front and centre <laughs> on this wrap that has the 2006-07 quadruple winners side by side with the 2003-04 uh, Invincible site. Like, what's just your emotional reaction to seeing that? My first reaction was just like, wow. You know, it's an incredible piece of artwork and it brings me back to a time which, which I re remember fondly of just success across the club, a time of enjoying watching the men's game but also playing uh, for Arsenal. Um, and a time where, you know, I don't think we really re recognised what we had achieved in that moment, but to see it captured in the way it has been and to be able to reflect and celebrate that moment in time has been amazing. And of course, in that, that final against Umea, you know, you had, I mean, you were what, what, 21, 22 during that season, but Faye White got injured, so you were playing a lot more. So all of a sudden you're playing against Hannah Lundberg, against Marta, you know, were you, was there any point before that game where you were a bit daunted or did you all just believe in the game plan so much? I think at that time, especially since I was a younger player, I think I really appreciated that Vic trusted me to step in at a time where our captain, who was a key part of the team and a valued member in terms of leadership, was out. Um, and I, it gave me confidence, I think. I knew I was coming up against top quality, world class players in Marta, Hannah Jungberg, as you mentioned. Um, but for some reason, at that time, I felt fearless. And maybe that was part of a bit of youthful, uh, you know, ignorance in a way as well to just go out there and, and have that kind of belief within the team. But that really came from the togetherness we had as a group. Um, you know, we, we loved being together. We loved training together. We loved playing matches and winning together. And that was one of the toughest challenges um, in my career, in our careers, probably at that time because we wanted to achieve something big and we were able to do it because of that reason, I think. And, uh, you know, I mentioned there the 2003-04 Invincibles, the men, but, um, I mean, I was at Highbury the day that the men got their 38th game and that wasn't the only uh, that wasn't the only time that, that the league trophy was lifted on the Highbury turf that night I feel like a massively forgotten um, kind of element of that was Arsenal winning the league later that day at Highbury can you just talk through maybe your memories of that and maybe set the scene because that was an incredible final day of the season I wish I could Tim but you know <laughs> I'm a lot older now and my memories are blur um, <laughs> But what I do remember is just the, the trophy lift, you know, walking around with the girls, uh, the cheers and, and claps and everyone celebrating and just being like, wow, you know, trying to take it in. You, you, you're trying to deal with all the emotions of what you've achieved. Um, it's much harder to do in the moment, much easier to do in retrospect and reflect upon it. But it's an incredible time, an incredible feeling. And that's why I have such uh, fun memories and such a strong connection, I think, still. Uh, with the club to this day because the supporters have always been fantastic as well and always been behind uh, the teams. Yeah, and and uh, viewer, there were three teams that could win the league on the final day and Arsenal did it. So that's how the 2003-04 <laughs> season ended for, for the women. But, you know, you referenced the connection you still feel with Arsenal and I wanted to ask a couple of questions about that. Um, you know, your, your penultimate game as a professional at the end of last season for Aston Villa when you came to Boreham Wood and you got that guard of honour uh, from the Arsenal team. I mean, first of all, when were you alerted about that and how did that feel getting that kind of that recognition from the club? Yeah, I think I, I was told uh, the week leading up to the game that something was going to happen. Uh, I wasn't exactly sure what until the, probably a day or two prior to the game. Um, and then when I heard it was the guard of honour and, you know, they were going to hand me a gift and things like that, I was just very proud and very honoured uh, for them to, you know, celebrate me in that way and, you know, to show, I guess, that level of, of respect as well. Um, but it was, it was amazing. I, you know, felt I had to kind of control my emotions on the day. We had still had a tough game to play, but it was, it was lovely and a really lovely tribute, especially, you know, the players of today as well. Being there and, and clapping me was uh, a moment I think I'll remember forever and, and treasure. So, yeah, it was great. 
Yeah, and, and like also I don't want to make out that everything was always sweetness and light and everything like that. Like you and Leanne, you both went to Chelsea in, in 2009 and I know Vic was, was publicly critical of yeah. both of you for making, that, uh, for making that decision and making that move. I mean, that must have hurt at the time and I, I wonder whether how you view that with, with a lot of water under the bridge now. Yeah, absolutely. I, I have the utmost respect for Vic. Um, he knows that. We're, we're human beings at the ed end of the day. And at that time, I think um, even with those statements, those were emotional statements because that's how much we meant to him as players. Uh, and that's how much you know it meant for him to have us there at the club at the time. Um, and for me, I think I, I saw it as a, another opportunity to challenge myself and go to somewhere where I wouldn't necessarily be comfortable and not winning all the time and learning how to deal with perhaps that. Um, and you can only reflect upon the decisions that you make when you're older and, and decide whether you think that was the right or wrong one. But all I can say is I definitely learned a lot about myself as an individual, myself as a player, uh, and what the game of football um, me meant to me and still means to me. Um, but that's football, you know. Players always make will make decisions um, based on a lot of different things. Uh, but I take those times as um, a sign of the kind of connection and bond, really, that we had as a group. It, that of course, it was painful. It wasn't an easy decision to make, and it was hard to leave a club that I loved and you know I felt I had a lot of success at. But also as a as a person, the human instinct in me, I wanted to expand myself as well. And I often wonder with players, like at the moment, who are either coming to the end of their careers or you retired recently, when you look at stuff like the Lionesses winning the Euros in front of 90,000 people at Wembley, and I still can't believe I get to say that sentence, and on Sunday Arsenal are going to play a WSL game in front of more than 40,000 people for the third time this season. Like, I wonder, first of all, did you ever think you'd see anything like that as a player or otherwise? And is there a small part of you that thinks, man, I wish I was five years younger? <laughs> yeah, there's always a small part of you that's, you know, I wish I was a bit younger. I wish I had um, I, not to change the experiences I had because I, I had a most incredible time. I, I lived in a time with a kind of more of an anonymous anonymity you know where I could do what I wanted to do <laughs> without any kind of real scrutiny and intrusiveness in a different way the modern game but at the same time I, I'm really proud I'm immensely proud that because of players like myself and, and pioneers before my time their persistence despite the challenges and the lack of support the lack of resource they kept playing the game of football and that's what's allowed people to constantly bang on doors uh, to get the game to where it is today where we have more people interested more people seeing value in women and in women's sport and giving it the, the right platforms that it deserves um, really that's a celebration that everyone has contributed to so that's how I look at it but of course you know I think about, oh, you know, when I was 13, what would it have been like to train every day? Mm. And, and how much further could I have gone in terms of my own potential, potentially? But at the same time, I had a fantastic time playing football. And I'm just happy that I did it. And, and now lots more young girls are going to be in it, playing a game in it, where the game is in a better place than it's ever been. And uh, just finally, just in terms of your kind of post-career, you know, you've done a lot of media, some coaching at Bristol City, uh, breaking the transfer of Tobin Heath to Arsenal on Sky Sports <laughs> News, a real highlight. Um, like, how, how are you finding post-career now you've, you've been out for six months as a player anyway? Busy. <laughs> Busier than I ever imagined. <laughs> I mean, good. yeah, uh, which is a good thing. Um, when I stopped playing, you know, I, I kind of had been building up towards my transition um, and the opportunities within, the, within media have been fantastic experiences for me to, to experience. And uh, obviously the Euros came around rather quickly, so I got the opportunity to be on the other side of the white line and, and sort of commentate and do all of those things. And it's been, it's been great because it's been also able to feed back into my coaching stuff and an analytical view of the game as well. Um, and now being back on the pitch of younger players, supporting them in their development both on and off the pitch, has been another um, added plus, I think, to my retirement to just, um, yeah, to just give back, to give back to the game in a, in a positive way, of which I wanted to, uh, an opportunity to share my knowledge. So 
yeah, the window has been massively burst open and there's been opportunities left, right and centre and really now I'm just exploring a world I never knew <laughs> I'd be in. Um, well, I knew I'd be in it eventually, but I didn't know what it would look like. So it's been great to, to do that. Well, Anita, I think I speak for all Arsenal fans and all women's football fans. We're still, um, I think we will love the fact that your face is still out there, even if you're not playing anymore. Uh, so thank you very much for joining us. Pleasure. Thanks, too.